If you ask me, animation sort of stands alone among the other computer graphics skill sets. I would compare animation to the lead singer of a rock band, modeling to the lead guitarist, rigging to the drummer, and texturing to the bass player. Uh, even though animation is nothing without the others, it tends to get all the glory. And primarily as a modeler myself, this tends to rub me the wrong way. However, on this project and every other project where I've dabbled in animation, this is hard to say, but I kind of understand why. Uh, in my opinion, animation is the most technical discipline after rigging. So animation is a tough thing. Well, I should clarify, good animation is a tough thing. Thankfully, we have an animation bible of sorts passed down by Walt Disney's famous Nine Old Men. These guys documented 12 principles of animation that, when applied, certainly improves quality. So in no particular order, number one, squash and stretch. This can be seen a lot in stylized cartoon animation, where the purpose is to convey the effects of an object's weight through compression and extension. Uh, think about a golf ball. Holding it in your hand, it feels rock hard, but if you watch a slow motion video of a golfer hitting the golf ball, it compresses a surprising amount. Uh, number two, anticipation. It's another way to direct the audience and almost foreshadow what's about to happen. I don't mean what's about to happen in the story or plot, but what the following action is going to be. So for example, when a pitcher throws a baseball, he first has to go into a windup. When someone jumps in the air, they first have to build momentum by bending down and then jumping up. Number three is staging. And this comes from theater, uh, where everything in the frame is set up intentionally to direct the viewer's attention and support the action that's happening. An obvious example of this is looking down a hallway with someone standing at the far end. The angles of the walls naturally cause your eye to follow the lines down to the focal point. Number four, straight ahead versus pose to pose. These are two different animation methods that are often used for different purposes. Straight ahead means you simply start animating at the beginning and you go all the way to the end. This method can be good for realistic and dynamic animation. Uh, pose to pose is where you set key blocking poses throughout the animation, then uh, polish the animation from those key poses. This method is good for dramatic sequences uh, where emotion is very important. Number five, follow through and overlapping action. This is based on the laws of physics, things like drag and jiggle and reaction. It's movement that is the result of another force. So again, with a pitcher example, notice how his body leads the action while his throwing arm is dragged along by his body and shoulder. Uh, then when the body stops moving, his arm swings to catch up with it. Uh, this chain of actions shows the viewer how much force he's putting into that throw. Um, number six, secondary action. It's somewhat similar to the last one, and the purpose here is to emphasize and support the main action. A common example of this is facial animation. When trying to convey an emotion, uh, it's often the body language that does most of the work, and the facial expression simply supports the body language. In these cases, it's the body action that is primary, and the face action is secondary. Number seven, slow in and slow out. This is very important for quality animation. And it's the fact that not only a character's body, but pretty much all objects in motion need time to accelerate and slow down. Think about anything that rolls. It will eventually decelerate and stop thanks to friction. Air resistance causes the same effect. At number eight, arcs. This is the idea that objects in motion should follow a smooth arching path or parabolic trajectory. Think about throwing a ball in the air. The trajectory is a very smooth, arched ascent into the air, followed by a smooth arc back to the ground. Applying this to body part motion as well makes for very appealing movement. Number nine, timing. Uh, I'm sure you've heard the phrase that timing is everything. Uh, it's certainly true for animation. The amount of time between actions is absolutely paramount for quality animation. Number 10, exaggeration. This is fairly self-explanatory and it's particularly useful in stylized animation. Pushing a movement or facial expression beyond a realistic limit can really emphasize the point you're trying to make in your animation. Number 11, solid drawing. Now keep in mind that this list is from the 1940s or 50s uh, before computer animation. So this doesn't really apply as much here as it does for traditional 2D animation. But the principle is to maintain proper volumes and proportions throughout an animation. When you're using pencil and paper, that obviously requires more effort than when the computer does it for you. And last, but certainly not least, number 12, appeal. I think this is the most artistic principle because figuring out what's appealing isn't objective, it's subjective. 
Applying each of these principles will produce proficient animation, but that doesn't guarantee that it will be interesting. Injecting appeal into an animation is certainly an art. All right. Having gone over those, uh, first I again want to encourage you to get in the habit of applying them in your animation because they will make it better. But I also want to say uh, if you simply observe reality, you will see all of these principles in action. So more than memorizing these principles, I want to encourage you to hone your observational skills because these principles come from what the nine old men observed. They didn't just hypothesize these into existence. So a very practical way to improve your animation skills is be very observant every day as you see people move. Uh, and this will not only make you a better animator, but also a better artist overall. And uh, I think that's enough monologue. So let's get to work.